Hi guys, it's Lynn here. I hope everyone is having an amazing day. Now in today's video, I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about the Crassula muscosa plant and also how to care for it. Now the Crassula muscosa plant, which is this amazing wacky sort of mossy like plant here, I've got two, two to show you as an example, is commonly called the watch chain plant. And it's called that because of its little leaf arrangements here, the, the little segments tightly very tight together that resemble sort of like a necklace, a jewellery necklace and also um, a watch chain and that's where it's got its common little nickname from. Now it grows in its natural habitats in South Africa in the winter and summer rainfall areas of the Western and Eastern Cape, growing in well-draining rocky, rocky quartz fields. Now it's a spreading uh, trailing growing plant as you can see here and it can grow pretty fast during the growing period. And as the plant grows larger, it's common for the stem segments to fall off. And uh, when they do, they root in nearby pots. Um, this is always happening with mine. I keep this out in the yard in the spring and summer and the bits sometimes fall off and they grow all around the pots and even in the yard as well. Um, they're very, very easy to grow when they, they fall off like that. And um, it's commonly called, as I mentioned, the watch chain plant because of its tiny, tight little leaf arrangements. Um, resembling that of a jewellery chain and a watch chain. Now the word mucosa is Latin for mossy due to its very moss-like appearance. Now this plant is commonly sold and seen for sale as part of a plant and succulent bowl garden arrangement. And this particular plant here, this one here, this is the, the mother plant, that's a cutting from it, was actually given to me 12 years ago from my friend Anna when I used to live in Sligo on the west coast of Ireland. And it has grown into a very beautiful plant over the years. So it's, it's pretty old, this plant, and it's doing pretty well. Now for the care on this amazing little wacky plant. Now when it comes to the light, the lighting requirements, now this particular plant grows best in full sun or very, very bright light with, with a, ideally some sunshine. Um, it, a sunny window or a sunny position is ideal for this plant. But, but if you're growing it in the midday sun in the middle of summer, then you need to provide plenty of ventilation. So if you've got this in a sunny window or sunny greenhouse and it's particularly warm in the summer, then you need to get, give a bit of ventilation. Otherwise, these um, little leaf segments here tend to drop off and fall very easily. So that's just something to bear in mind. And um, too much sun or too little sun, especially if, without um, plenty of fresh ventilation, um, as I say, leaf segments drop off um, either if there's not enough sun or too much sun. So a bright sunny position is ideal to grow this plant all year round. If you don't have a sunny window or sunny position, then I, I recommend putting some plant grow lights over the plant to um, replace the light, the sunshine, to give it that extra boost. Now the soil requirements, now like all succulents, this particular plant needs a very well draining uh, succulent soil. So any good quality um, cactus and succulent soil mix will be best for this. Or in this case, I always like to make my own and I use um, an equal, three equal parts of um, loam. In this case, I use a brand called John Innes number no. two, but you can use any loam, L-O-A-M based soil and I mix it with grit and sand, three equal parts. And if you want to know how I make my own succulent soil, then do check out a video out I have made on how to make, how, sorry, how to make cactus and succulent soil in three easy steps. Links will be up above, and I'll also put the links down below as well. But if you, if you find making your own soil is a bit too much hassle, then you can use any good quality cactus and succulent soil. The most important thing is that it's very well draining, and the, the soil dries out quick when in between waterings. Now next will be the watering. Now, first of all, in spring and summer and sort of early fall, you're best to water these plants every time the soil has dried out in their pots. They can take quite a lot of watering um, during their active growing period, so I never let them stay too dry for too long. But as a rule of thumb, water every time the soil in the pots dries out. And um, in the winter time, much less water like all succulents. This is a, often a winter flowering plant. Mine is actually in flower at the moment. A very, very minute, tiny flowers. I don't think you're going to see it. I'm going to show you some photographs when I'm talking about the flowering of these plants a bit later on in the video. 
but they're not necessarily winter growing they're winter flowering but not winter growing but they're sometimes flowering in the spring and summer the succulents can sometimes have a mind on their own um but what i do in the winter time is i keep this mostly dry i water it about once a month and i keep this plant in the house i have another one outside growing out in the yard on our apple trees i'm going to talk about i talk about temperature in a minute and that's kept pretty wet all the time and it seems to do okay but ideally they like to be kept more drier and I give it a good water about once a month and they let it dry out then. If you if you leave them to, if you're growing these in the house indoors in, in warm temperatures and you let it go too long without water, again they'll drop the stem segments very easily. And that's the same as well if you give it too much water. So that gives a bit of an indication with the watering. But once a month is a good good rule of thumb in the winter and water every time the soil dries out in the spring, summer and early fall. Now fertilising. Now I fertilise this plant about once every two to three weeks in the spring and summer and I don't fertilise it at all in winter. As I say, I just water it once a month in winter. Um, I won't fertilise it at all. Although it's usually flowers, which it is at the moment, in the, um, in the winter time, I still don't fertilise it. I'll only fertilise it spring and summer when it's coming into its active growing period. And as I say, a bit of cactus and succulent, good quality fertiliser every two to three weeks is enough for this plant. Now repotting, how often should they be repotted? Now the best time to repot is always spring and summer or early fall when they're in their active growth and I always recommend potting it up into just the next size pot, don't go potting these into a massive pot because obviously the more soil around succulents, this is for all succulents around their roots, the more likely they're going to take longer to dry out in between waterings and also you've got the, the possibility of root rot and things like that so just pot up into the next size pot as I mentioned with the soil in a well draining cactus and succulent soil mix and then once you've repotted it best to wait a few days anything from five days to a week before you start to water again now temperature now in the spring and summer the ideal temperatures probably to have this plant growing at its best will be around 70 to 75 degrees fahrenheit but obviously it, like all suckers it can take a lot higher temperatures than that as long as plenty of ventilation can be given once temperatures sort of go over 80 percent um, 80 sorry 80 degrees fahrenheit then it can drop a lot of leaf segments and again this plant is very prone to, to doing that so I would recommend ideally if you, if you have this outside or you have it in a greenhouse it's very warm have windows open and doors open for plenty of ventilation same if you have it in a sunny window as well um, and the, with the winter time this is a very very cold hardy succulent I'm going to show you I'm going to show you my other plant that's growing outside now on my apple tree and it would take easily we don't get very cold winters here in, in Ireland we're in Northern Ireland but it quite you know it's not unusual for it to drop to minus five and plant does absolutely great out there um, but ideally the ideal minimum winter temperature will be about five Celsius about 40 which is about 41 degrees Fahrenheit because lower than that they do tend to not look their best and drop a few stem segments um, but as I say they can be pretty they're hardy to about minus um, seven Celsius which is about 20 degrees Fahrenheit but I'd say as I mentioned ideally around 5c 41 Fahrenheit I'm just going to take you outside now and show you the one I've got growing outside now here I am out in the yard and this is the one that fell off the, the main mother plant indoors and it took root in here. Now it's a little bit on the yellow side and as you can see it, it, has, it keeps dropping a lot of segments and they sometimes take root in all these pots. But um, that's just an example how we've had pretty, pretty cold nights here um, the past few nights and it dropped to about minus four the one night but, and last year as well but it seems to be growing so it proves it's pretty, pretty winter hardy there. Now humidity and some of the good news with this plant as I showed you um, the one I've got growing outside there it's outdoors and it gets probably 100% humidity most of the time outside and it's still doing okay but ideally like all succulents they do like to have probably 50% humidity or lower because if they get higher humidity than that if they're indoors anyway um, or in greenhouses the lack of ventilation can encourage fungus and molds and things like that if they're growing outside as you've seen with mine out there growing on, on top of the apple tree soil 
um, doesn't it gets plenty of ventilation so the fact that it's high humidity doesn't seem to be such a problem but if, if you've got these indoors as I have with these ideally 50 percent or indoor house humidity is fine for these uh, for these plants now flowering and um, this particular plant here is actually in flower at the moment. Uh, I'm going to show you in a minute, very hard to see, but I'm going to put some photographs on and also going to link up to a video when this was in flower a few years ago. So you get to see what it looks like close up. Um, but they, they are winter flowering succulents. I've had this particular plant flower in the spring and summer as well. But because they're from South Africa, they do have obviously more likely to flower in the winter, especially have them indoors. As you can see now these are actually going to point here to the most tiniest they're the most tiniest miniature little flowers you're ever going to see and i don't think you're going to see much here on this camera so i'm going to show you now what this what this actual plant looks like with these flowers close up with some photographs and uh my fiance hans took their photographs so um they're very very nice pictures there and I'm going to link up above to a video of what the plant looks like in flower when this plant was flowering a few years ago. So do check that video out. It's much more better macro on it. Links up above and I'll also put the links down below to this plant in flower. And uh, the, the flowers, as, as you can see, are extremely small, probably the most tiniest flowers I've ever seen. And most growers don't even see them, see the flowers. They're so, so tiny. They usually smell the flowers before they see them because the plant itself, when it's flowering, gives off quite a strange smell. It's, it's not horrible, but it smells a little bit soapy and musty and hard to really compare it to anything, but it's a bit of a musty smell, but it's not a horrible smell. <laughs> so that's a, quite a, a unique smell it's like these flowers are so tiny it's so easy to miss them now pruning now th these this particular plant as, a, as i mentioned earlier has a habit of dropping a lot of leaf segments i'll just show this is quite an old plant as you can see it's normal for these crassula muscosas to actually as they get grow the stems grow they grow brown and sometimes hard at the base and then these the new fresh growth often drops off with the weight um, the good news is they're very easy to, to propagate from the cuttings and the bits that fall off. But what I do with this particular plant, I, I leave it sort of a year or two so it looks like this. And when, it, when they start dropping the segments, then I, I give it a bit of a prune. I literally just cut it. Um, there's no special way of pruning with this plant. I just trim it back. All the cuttings then I just put into a bowl of water and they root so easily. And the best time to prune the plant back is obviously with all type of plants, spring or early summer. Um, but if any, any of the segments fall off in the meantime, you can just literally stick them in water. They root so easy. And um, so this is a bit of a pruning and propagation in, in one because it's just so easy to prune back and just stick the cuttings in water. They root really fast. Um, usually within a, in a few weeks once they've rooted then I pop them up as I say this is a example of one that um, just I prune back and the cuttings I stuck in there and it's another little plant there and it's always good to sort of you can restart these plants because they do as I mentioned I'll just show you a close-up on here how they go sort of very woody and brown at the base I personally like that but there's times I do have to restart the plant again from cuttings when it starts to get too top heavy and the cuttings keep and so the the new fresh growth keeps falling off so very easy to just restart again um, and take cuttings from that and I've actually made a complete video on how to propagate this plant so do check that video out links up above and also put links down below in the video description now last of all the, the thing that we all hate pests and diseases and um, obviously like all succulents they're mealybugs thrips scale insect um, they all seem to attack these type of plants and scale is very hard to spot on a plant like this as mealybugs as well. They seem to hide in all the little segments. But as, as I've done in a quite mentioned in a few of my videos, the best thing I love to use is neem oil mixed with horticultural soap. And I've made a complete video on how to use neem oil to um, get rid of mealybugs and all other type of insect pests. Uh, so links up above to that video also and links down below to that video. I explain all about neem oil for there. If you happen to have pests on this plant and you want to know how to treat it, and when it comes to diseases like all succulents, rot and fungus, um, mould, seems to be like with, with a lot of succulents, the main thing with these, rotting from overwatering as well. But this is a very easy plant. If it happens to start rotting from overwatering, then you, 
it's so easy to prune back and just regrow the plant again from cutting so it's a bit safer than other type of plants that just die you know if they get root rot it's quite easy to save from cuttings there but as I say if you only water it every time the soil dries out in the pot during spring and summer and keep it more drier in the winter there shouldn't really be any problems with that now with fungus and moles and things like that again ventilation is always the most but if you're given plenty of ventilation both in the summer and the winter it shouldn't really be a problem with moles and fungus but if you happen to have that on your plant again neem oil is brilliant for that and i mentioned all in that video so there we go guys i hope you found that little care video on the crassula mucosa uh, watch plant useful and for lots more tips and tricks on how to care for and grow cacti and succulents then as well as please do subscribe to my channel but also check out my website desertplantsofavalon.com Calm. I want to send you loads of love, heaps of happiness and tons and tons of plant power from across the Emerald Isle. And until my next video, bye, bye.